Hello everyone, and welcome to my Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Sally informed Chloe at Crimson Lights about Victor's offer of a contract position leading a new design section at Newman Enterprises. Chloe questioned Sally about whether she believed it was a good idea to accept a job from Victor, but awful for Nick to support them unconditionally. Chloe was informed by Sally that her connection with Nick was too significant to put at danger by involving money. They would report directly to Victor, according to Chloe, and Victoria would love to see Sally burned to death. Chloe questioned Sally's desire to quit their position at Chancellor Winters. It was noted by Sally that it was independent work. Chloe assured Sally that everything was reliable and legal. She claimed that Lily and Devon were liked and trustworthy. Working for Victor, according to Chloe, was a formula for catastrophe. Sally claimed that working as a freelancer required them to constantly be on the lookout for new projects. As soon as they showed themselves, Chloe said, the missions would come after them. Sally argued that Victor was providing an extremely enticing full-time, guaranteed contract to lead a brand new design division. Sally was informed by Chloe that they had both made commitments to Chancellor Winters. Chloe asserted that Sally's goal was to win over Nick's family and convince them that they had misunderstood her rather than to make a wise career choice. While Sally acknowledged that was a contributing factor, it was also a wise job choice for both of them. Victor wanted to control Sally, Chloe insisted, because Sally was a part of Nick's life and Victor would control her as well. Chloe informed Sally that she didn't want to hang around till Victor became enraged and began to crush her. Sally asserted that she thought they could pull it off, winning big for everyone. Sally was told to counter out by Chloe. Chloe departed. At Newman, Nate complimented Nikki on her outstanding work on a report. He claimed to have been present at that meeting with the two swaggering males who believed they could convince the two women present to buy whatever it was they were trying to sell. He claimed that within five minutes, Nikki had them begging her to conduct business with them and had them eating out of her hands. Working with Nikki, he claimed, was an honor since he could learn so much from her. Nate was told by Nikki that her suspicions about him increased because of his gushing. Nate expressed regret and said he didn't mean to hurt her feelings. Although Nikki claimed not to be offended, she wasn't a pushover either. She claimed that unlike Victor, she had told him straight out that she would give him the benefit of the doubt. Nikki claimed that Nate had not given them any cause to suspect him, but she trusted Nick's gut feelings, which were informing him that Nate was working toward a secret goal. Nate should take that as a warning if it turns out to be true, she remarked, because it would never occur. More dangerous challenges have been overcome by Newman Enterprises, according to Nikki, than by any self-serving strategy Nate could have fought up. She claimed that the home always triumphed. He may explain to her his plans for the future at Newman if they meet up later at the athletic club, as recommended by Nikki. Haddam questioned Phyllis in her athletic club suite about if Tucker was holding Carson, the EMT, over her head. He was, according to Phyllis, who said that she had to defend herself from the accusations. Adam asserted that he didn't think the scoundrel Tucker would prevent Phyllis from working for his business. Adam promised Phyllis that he would work with her attorney to gain power so that Phyllis wouldn't go to jail. He claimed to have discovered something in some old documents from Tucker's employer. With relief, Phyllis almost passed out. Adam warned that Tucker's control over Phyllis would be gravely jeopardized if Phyllis used the information effectively. Even though Tucker wasn't around at the time, Adam told her that the information was huge and terrifying. He declared that Tucker would still be held accountable because his company had been involved. Adam revealed to Phyllis that a prominent artist had abused some minor girls while he was on tour, but the PR department for one of Tucker's record labels had concealed this information. Because they wished to avoid any legal action until the tour was over, the artist had only been detained after the arrest. Adam claimed that Tucker had discovered the truth after the incident and that he had made great efforts to get the whole thing forgotten. Phyllis questioned how Adam learned about it. 
Adam informed Phyllis that he had all of McCall's business records and that two emails from Audra Charles had been found. According to Audra's letter, PR needed to be terminated with benefits in order to keep them quiet, and the vocalist issue would be resolved in an ethical manner. Adam claimed that Tucker had destroyed all of the paperwork so that there wouldn't be any red flags. Tucker and Audra, according to Phyllis, covered up a statutory rape. If Adam had the emails to back it up, Phyllis questioned. As per Adam he did. Adam might have used it as leverage for himself, but instead, he decided to offer it to Phyllis, which left her in wonder. When the time was perfect, according to Adam, he could utilize the Audra Charles link for himself, and he could also use the knowledge as leverage to keep Phyllis out of jail. He claimed he wanted Phyllis because she was the best of the best for his new business. At the athletic club, Nate expressed his gratitude for Nikki's invitation to lunch. He claimed Victoria would value the opportunity to know Victoria better, as well as Nikki's kind gesture. Nate was told by Nikki to quit making up stories. She inquired as to Nate's expectations for his future at Newman. He declared that he desired to lead Newman with Victoria. In the few time he had spent at Newman, Nate had come to respect and admire what Newman stood for. He had expressed this to Nikki. Even though Nick had succeeded by working with Sharon and Adam, he hated that Nick didn't trust him and that others believed he had anything to do with Nick quitting the company. Victoria, he claimed, had been with him every step of the way and had never sided with Nick. He claimed that had inspired him and played a significant role in his conviction that he could achieve great success at Newman. Nicky inquired as to Nate's feelings for Victoria. Nate acknowledged that he wasn't, but he was still attracted to and involved with her. He claimed that their relationship wasn't ready for love and that he didn't know whether it was in their future. What would happen to his dream if he and Victoria split up? Nikki questioned. She claimed that by asking that question, Nate's genuine intentions were made unclear to her. Nate asserted that Nikki had led him into that situation. Nate revealed to Nikki that Victoria and he have a special chemistry and understanding that was based on a solid friendship. In the wake of Locke's treachery, he claimed to have witnessed her tenacity. He claimed that none of them was interested in romance or hurry to classify or analyze what they had. If they continued having romantic encounters, he claimed he could picture himself falling in love with Victoria in the future. He claimed that he had a gut feeling Victoria felt the same way about him. Elena was seated at a table next to Nate and Nikki. She had heard Nikki describe Nate as a man with intelligence, a big ego, and a lot of ambition but a bad history with relationships. Nicky claimed that while he may become extremely wealthy through Newman Enterprises, he would also expose himself to continual scrutiny. She claimed Victoria took great pride in her independence while also being fiercely guarded. Nicky forewarned him that if he caused Victoria more misery and anxiety than joy, he would leave in a matter of minutes and all of his ego and ambition would have been for naught. She grinned. Elena ignored Nate when he approached her after Nikki left to answer a phone call and stated it was nice to see her. How is she? he inquired. She advised him to quit trying to be a good guy or be cordial with her because she wouldn't return the favor. Nate apologized and stated that his sole goal was for them to live in harmony. Elena stated that she had heard that he desired Victoria and hoped Nikki hadn't fallen for that. Nate's concept of love according to Elena, is a little manipulation combined with an unbreakable determination to seduce women, so perhaps Elena should speak with Nikki and explain this to her. She predicted that Nate would eventually become burned by the games he continued playing, and she might be the one to start the fire. After giving him the admonition to avoid her, Elena walked away. Nate was asked if Elena was another ex who had left him with nothing but a ruin by Nikki, after everything Victoria had been through, she questioned whether she had anything to look forward to. Sally informed Adam that Chloe had rejected Victor's offer for them to launch their own design division while they were in the park. She claimed Chloe left her because she believed Victor had a hidden agenda. Adam alleged that Victor always had a plan B for each of his new undertakings. Anyone near the Newman circle, he claimed, was fair game. 
Adam was asked if he believed Sally should accept the position. Adam said that while it was fantastic to see Sally return some of the fire, he wasn't being fair when it came to Victor. Victor might have noticed her aptitude and potential, he claimed. He claimed that creating a section under the Newman banner would be a strong addition to her resume and that the price was fair. He inquired as to Nick's doubts. She claimed Nick advised her to exercise caution. She claimed that he was away when they hadn't spoken about it. Nick, according to Adam, was holding meetings with the McCall divisions to infuse them about the reforms. He described being alone as being a hell of a time for her. Sally claimed that having Nick go had been beneficial for her. She acknowledged that she relied on him and that she missed him a lot. She remarked that it was comforting to be reminded that she could survive the day on her own and that she was gradually recovering. She inquired as to Adam's progress toward recovery. She was asked whether she was certain she wanted to discuss it. Adam disputed Sally's allegation that she did, saying it wasn't that simple for him. However, she had two options. She could wallow in bed in the darkness, or she could move on from the tragedy she could do nothing about. Sally informed Adam that it was raw and brutal and ached in areas she hadn't realized existed. She claimed that focusing on something under her control that work had helped. She questioned if it applied to him as well. Adam claimed that while work served as a diversion for a while, he felt empty at home at the end of the day. She advised him to come up with ideas about how to deal with that void. After going through each cupboard in her room, Sally informed Adam that she had donated her pregnant clothes and baby supplies. She claimed that knowing that someone could use them had been good. She claimed that despite how painful the loss was, it was a part of both her and his reality. Adam asserted that the moment wasn't right for him to discuss it. Adam expressed his happiness to Sally about her progress toward recovery and his gratitude for her ability to elevate her emotional state. He claimed that his current reality was that he wasn't there yet. If and when he was prepared to discuss it, Sally claimed he would know where to find her. When Phyllis ran into Christine at society, she declared she didn't want to keep Christine. Christine snarled, it's good to see Phyllis enjoying her brief freedom. Phyllis was informed by Christine that her court date had been scheduled. Christine should try to restrain her joy, Phyllis said. She asserted that while she was aware that Christine's greatest desire was to see her free, she had all she needed to successfully defend herself and win her freedom. Christine claimed that Phyllis had a remarkable sense of self-preservation and that she thought that if she repeated something often enough, it would eventually materialize. Phyllis was informed by Christine that a jury would decide her destiny, and they would have to wait and see who the jury choose to believe. Christine criticized Phyllis for being so self-centered as to put Summer in danger by luring her into her predicament and opening Summer up to legal action. Phyllis instructed Christine to assist her however she saw fit, but not to involve Summer. They had a long history of hostility, according to Phyllis. Christine claimed Summer had committed a criminal by aiding and abetting a wanted fugitive. Christine was the DA. Christine insisted that it had nothing to do with their prior interactions and everything to do with her sworn duty to bring criminals to justice. Christine was reminded by Phyllis that Summer had been mourning the loss of a mother she had believed to be deceased. It was described as an extremely complex scenario by Phyllis. Chris concurred. Phyllis acknowledged that she had caused Summer to be in a crazy circumstance and that the entire situation had been her responsibility. She acknowledged that Summer had erred and shown poor judgment in an effort to defend her defenseless mother. She inquired as to Christine's response in a like circumstance. Phyllis claimed that sending Summer to prison would not be just. They both realized Phyllis wasn't innocent, so Christine proposed they work out a bargain. She advised Phyllis withdraw her plea of not guilty to avert a trial. Christine might be convinced to drop the charges against Summer if Phyllis admitted what she had done, accepted her punishment, and waived her right to appeal. When Tucker came, he welcomed them. Christine instructed Phyllis to speak with Heather and get a response by the end of the week. Tucker inquired about the reason Phyllis wanted to meet him after Christine left. He inquired as to the nature of her missing star witness. 
He wouldn't be gone for long, according to Phyllis. Unless she presented a counteroffer, Tucker asserted that Carson would remain missing for the duration of his prediction. Phyllis acknowledged having a counterproposal. What would happen if they pretended that Tucker had accepted Phyllis' counteroffer? Tucker offered. Phyllis declared that she would have Carson placed in a protective custody of her choice because she was the sole witness who could clear her. Tucker questioned in return for what? Phyllis promised Tucker that she would keep quiet about a certain record label's decision to cover up its star recording artist's statutory rape of multiple little girls in order to protect him during his extremely lucrative tour. Tucker asserted that he had no idea what she was about. Tucker McCall was shocked when Phyllis said there were emails from Audra Charles to him that said, Singer problem remedied, hands clean. Nate and Nikki entered the workplace once more. I hope lunch wasn't too terrible for him, thought Nikki. Nate asserted that he was relieved Nikki had coerced him. He claimed that making it clear where he stood with Victoria had aided in his own self-clarification. His encounter with Elena, according to Nikki, had not inspired confidence. He claimed that was unrelated to him and Victoria. He claimed there was no comparison to what he and Victoria were creating because it was much deeper. According to Nikki, deeds speak louder than words. Nate concurred. Victoria has endured more in her life than anyone could possibly comprehend, Nikki said Nate. She asserted that Victoria deserved a strong, honest, and devoted relationship. Nate was looking at his new best friend, she said, whether he was the kind of guy who could provide Katie, Johnny, and Victoria someone they could rely on for the long run. Nate acknowledged the strategy. If Victoria ended up being the next Amanda or Elena, Nikki told him that he was in for his worst nightmare. Sally texted Nick from the patio of Crimson Lights, Miss you. Please hurry back. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.